to another running on air video. In this one I'll be restoring a Kurzweil K2000 from the 1990s. Specifically I'll be looking at problems with the keyboard, with the switches and doing a screen replacement. I'll leave links for the parts I've used and more detailed instructions in the description. I would advise you don't attempt this type of repair unless you have prior experience working with electronics. Apart from the danger of electrocution, various components are sensitive to being damaged by static electricity. Before I start, if you'd like to support the channel, then please check out some of my music on Bandcamp and streaming services. I'll also leave links in the description for that. With that out of the way, let's get started. Okay, I'm going to start looking at the K2000 before I can look at the sounds and look at how it works and things like that. I need to get it working properly. I bought this really quite a long time ago, actually about five years ago, and it's been sitting on a shelf waiting for me to get enough interest, enough inspiration to actually do something with it. I did do a little bit of work last week made some significant progress but there is quite a bit more to do. First of all the keyboard itself was in a pretty bad condition. Some of the keys the velocity wasn't working, some of the keys just didn't work at all. So I've been through and I have actually fixed that but I just wanted to talk about that problem which I'll do later in the video. The other issue was the switches. I have replaced all of the tack switches and so they work actually quite well now. The only way you can tell without the sound of course is just to go for the ones with lights but unfortunately the MIDI one doesn't work so I'm going to have to open it up again and look at that. Now the last main thing is the display. Now I think in this video you may not even be able to see that it was on. It's really quite indistinct and it's not something I would want to use so I've bought a replacement. Uh, it's a nice bright blue display. So I'm going to be looking at replacing that. There's uh, quite a good tutorial on that uh, on a web page, which I will be following. Okay, I've got the lid off. And one of the things that struck me and may strike you as well is the sheer amount of electronics that is in this keyboard. One other thing that I want to show you. Now this was a replacement for the capacitor that was there before, but the thing is it was too big and wouldn't fit in the space. So I just temporarily put it in like this, but that's not something that can stay like that. I've had a look at the board and tried to find some sensible way to secure it, but I can't. But fortunately I found these which are the same value and significantly smaller. The only thing is they look a bit suspiciously small. But the voltage is correct and the value is correct so I think I will give them a go. So the first problem as I mentioned was the keyboard itself. Now there's a couple of connectors here, I'm just going to show you those. These two connectors are the ones that connect to the keyboard. So typically in the past I've gone through the contacts which in this case are rubber pads with carbon contacts which touch other carbon contacts on a board then they all go back to the connectors that you can see here. So there's a couple of things to to look for. So dirty contacts it's one thing and then broken tracks on the board. Now I did see some signs of broken tracks and some of the contacts were a little bit dirty but nothing major and so when I tested the whole thing out using my continuity meter I didn't find any problems at all and I was quite surprised about that considering how the keyboard wasn't working. So that really then left me considering the issue of these connectors themselves. Now they look fine but I thought the best thing to do would be to try and clean them up and improve the connectivity. So for connectivity issues I tend to use this stuff which I've used on a number of keyboards. So it's a very dilute solution of the Stabilant 22 and isopropyl alcohol and I just use a toothbrush, clean the inside of the connectors and then drip some of the solution 
uh, inside the actual connector itself and also inside the receptacle for the connector. Plugged it in and all of the keys worked. Uh, I must admit I was quite surprised because I've fixed quite a few keyboards and I've not had this sort of problem before. So uh, yeah, that was quite good. Find a different solution to an old problem. So I think the next thing I'm going to do is to fix that one remaining switch. But in order to do that, I am going to have to remove both of these boards. They're connected to a, looks like a copper metal plate. So once you've undone all of the appropriate screws, it's not too difficult to lift the thing out. Right, so I've got the main boards out and we've got the switchboard. Right, which is all the way along here and then in the middle we have the display board which will also need to come out. I'm going to have to take that connector off, unsolder it and then resolder it onto the new display. So the next thing really is to fix the switch which is that one. And uh, I think I'll have a close look at the tracks as well. Do a little bit of continuity testing. One of the things you'll notice on these boards is these grey pads. There's quite a few of them. They conveniently sit exactly where the switches are, meaning that you have to remove them in order to change out the switches, or at least some of them. Now, when it comes to putting them back, I used double-sided tape gave the similar sort of adhesion to the original. So it was easy enough to do, and that would be my recommendation. So I've used the continuity tester and the switch itself seems fine. So I'm gonna look for the problem somewhere else. So I finally tracked down the brake to this joint here. So I've just put a solder bridge there, which I think will do the job. A quick word about these switch caps. They are incredibly difficult to get off. And at first I thought I was going to have a real problem. In the end, I realized that if you work them back and forth, top to bottom, sort of like this, and really quite hard, then they will come off. I'd suggest you do that while they're still attached to the board, because yet then you can get a bit more leverage. Putting them back on isn't quite so bad. Um, you just have to push down quite hard. But that seemed to be the best te technique I could find. So there's the old display. Boring old grey colour. That's where it's got to go. And that's the new display. Now, according to the instructions that I've read online, I was supposed to make that hole bigger but it looks like it fits already which is very good news so what have i got to do i've got to take the surround from that i've got to move the connector which is sold soldered there and put it there and i've got to be really careful about getting any dust in there because once it's there i'll have to take the entire synth apart in order to get rid of it which is going to be a real pain. But I've got an air duster, so that should help. I've transferred the wires over to the new display now. So the best way to avoid making a mistake on the end with the power cable is to mark up the connector so that the third pin is marked down here, and that then goes to the K connection and the first pin on the connector goes to the A connection and then on this end there's a bit of extra complication you can see there's two pins free but very logically you solder the connector to the first 20 pins Okay, 
so I've fitted the display and I had to take a little bit off the padding on the other side of the display, but that fits okay now. Now the issue I've got is that I need some spaces under the display. If I screw that down, it's gonna to put too much pressure on there. So I just need a few washers. display fitted now but as you can see it's completely whited out. I must admit when I first saw this I was somewhat alarmed thinking that I'd managed to kill the thing but fortunately that isn't the case. Now let's see if I can get this on the camera. Now I think you can see, you might be able to see, you can just about make out the text. So the problem is actually the contrast. So what you have to do is you go to the master button and then you have to find your way over to the contrast section using these cursor buttons here um, and then reduce the contrast to about, I found about minus 25 works quite well. And there you go. And the MIDI button works now as well. So pretty much done in terms of getting the thing working the way I want. So I'm just gonna put it back together again and start enjoying using the thing. Mm -hmm. 